Is this a fair representation of the sun to earth ratio? This is a model of how many earths can fit inside the sun. Damn, it's gotta be at least 12. Well, you're not wrong. Is this Twitter comment on the Budweiser Super Bowl ad correct or is it fuzzy math? Budweiser just spent $5 million on a commercial to brag about donating $100,000 worth of water. Uh, according to this article, a 30 second ad costs roughly $5 million. The Budweiser commercial lasted one minute, so the ad likely cost closer to $10 million. Hey, high quality audio and visuals aren't cheap to make either. Haven't seen the ad itself, but I would suspect it would have cost at least 100K, probably even closer to a million. All that to talk about some water? Oh, he must have been thirsty. Swimming in PUBG is faster than Michael Phelps. I got both of them. Sorry I didn't make it to get you though. That's okay. Now I don't have to swim across that massive river before the circle closes. Are they team comming through iMessage? I think I can make it, still some time. I wonder how fast he swims. I don't know. Okay, so I just measured it and it took you 35 seconds to go one white square in the water. Each square is 100 meters, so at 100 meters over 35 seconds, we get 2.86 meters a second. For reference, Michael Phelps usually maxes out at 6 miles per hour according to ESPN, which converts to 2.68 meters, which means in PUBG, your random character swims 6.7% faster than Michael Phelps. Okay, man. <laughs> Just checked out, nice. Uh, that PUBG swim, <laughs> there's no way we're still talking about this. <laughs> it actually gets more interesting when you consider that six miles per hour is Michael Phelps' top speed, not average speed. For comparison, the world record in 50 meter freestyle, the event that should have the highest average speed, is currently held by Caesar Cielo, using the long course record. His time was blazing fast 20.91 seconds. That gives him an average speed of 2.39 miles a second, or meters a second, sorry, or 5.35 miles per hour. That makes the PUBG character 16.4% faster. It's even more impressive when you consider that the PUBG character doesn't dive into the water at the beginning and is probably going to travel more than 50 meters. Yeah, because we got that dog in us on PUBG. What are the odds of guessing it right? A woman on the train kept staring at me and after about 25 minutes, she was like, I'm sorry, but you look like my high school boyfriend who passed away. And without missing a beat, I was like, Amanda? And she was like, my name's Rachel. But imagine if I guessed her name right. Oh, you would have terrified her. She would have you, she <laughs> would have sent shivers down her spine. She would have been like, you're a reanimated corpse? Yeah, that's right. How you been? Let's assume this is the USA. There were 165.92 million women and girls in the USA as of 2017. There has been some variation in the number of Amandas in the USA across sources, but 778,954 seems to be near the middle. That's not a lot of Amandas, uh, you know, relatively speaking. That means around 0.4695% of the female population is named Amanda, and OP had a 0.4695% chance of who he called Amanda actually being named Amanda. In other words, that wasn't going to play out. <laughs> You are way off. If you blended all 7.88 billion people on Earth into a fine goo, wonderful, wonderful concept. <laughs> Density of a human equals 985 kilograms. Um, what is over M3? Is that meters cubed? Yeah, it's meters cubed. I had to look that up real quick. Average human body mass is 62 kilograms. You would end up with a sphere of human goo just under one kilometer wide. I made a visualization of how that would look in the middle of Central Park in New York City. Oh, gross. The humanity meatball. Ah. <laughs> New Pizza Tower DLC. Uh, I'm in this photo and I don't like it. Shut up. We all are, dude, and none of us like it. <laughs> Approximately speaking, is this correct? Instead of giving $5 billion for Trump's wall, fix Flint's water crisis, 55 million. Feed all of homeless veterans three meals a day for a year, 84 million. Give all 3.2 million public school teachers a $1,000 Christmas bonus, 3.2 billion. Build 3,000 acres of solar farms, 1.5 billion. Total, 4.83 billion. All right, let's get the breakdown in here. If fixing Flint's problems was so easy, it would have been done by now. Unfortunately, it's not a money problem, it's a time problem. 
Get pipes can't be fixed overnight and work takes time. I think you could probably use $3.5 billion more strategically than giving just teachers a $1,000 bonus. Seems a little short-sighted. Uh, <laughs> I don't really have an opinion on this. I'm not, I, I'm not well versed in, in where we should be putting billions of dollars. You know, they, that's why they don't put me in charge of that. That's why I'm not in the treasury. If I knew what to do with that money, you're not going to find me sitting at the head being like, oh, what should we do about the, the national debt? Um, I don't know. One nine inch pizza versus two five inch pizzas. I ordered a nine inch pizza. After a while, the waiter brought two five inch pizzas and said that the nine inch pizza was not available and he was giving me two five inch pizzas instead and that I'm getting one inch more for free. I requested the waiter to call the owner. I gave him the mathematical formula to calculate the area of a circle. Circle area is pi by radius squared, where pi equals 3.1415926. R is the radius of the circle, so a nine inch circle area equals 63.62 square inches. Meanwhile, a five inch circle area is 19.63 square inches. The two five inch circle areas add up to 39.26 square inches. I said that even if he gave three pizzas, I would still lose out. How can you say you're giving me an extra inch for free? The owner was speechless. He finally gave me four pizzas. Take math seriously. That is the first time I think I've ever seen someone actually use like math in that way in a real world. This is the dude they write about in textbooks. This is him. He goes out and does this stuff for the textbooks. He is the situation maker, the circumstance creator. That's a lot of trees. Pakistan hired 63,000 people unemployed by COVID 19 to help plant 10 billion trees. Damn, that's over 150,000 trees per person, given that they plant all the trees. Might seem like a lot, but if it takes about 30 seconds to plant a tree and they work eight hours a day, it would only take 160 work days. 160 days for 150k trees. That's not a bad, that's not a bad stat line at all. It might take 30 seconds to plant it, but the whole process to move from one place to another, dig the hole, take the tree and actually plant it, might actually take three to four minutes per tree. You also have to consider the fact that you're not going to plant trees continually at one tree per three minutes all day long. You're realistically looking at about 960 to 1,288 hour days of nonstop working to plant trees. I believe the plan is for the planting to take place over five years and machinery could vastly speed up the process. That's still not a bad stat line for 150K trees per person. That's not bad at all. So you hate socialism, you say? If you make $50,000 a year, $36 a year taxes go to food stamps. $4,000 goes to corporate subsidies. If the $36 upsets you more than the $4,000, then you just hate poor people, not socialism. Oh no. When, when you make a post like that and then someone in Reddit replies with a with multiple like lines of text, you know it's gonna get crazy. According to this source, the US budget consists of $4.829 trillion, 1.151 trillion, 23.835% is spent on social welfare programs, of which the SNAP food stamps make up about 4.961% or 57.1 billion, meaning food stamps make up roughly 1.182% of the US annual budget. According to this source, the US government spends 100 billion on corporate subsidies, 2.071% of annual budget. In the US, someone making $50,000 will pay $5,638.50 in taxes, meaning roughly 116 will go towards corporate subsidies and $66 will go towards food stamps. So not very accurate. I do think if you're more upset over the 66 over the 116, it's still like, okay, you're, you're mad at the wrong thing. I think their sentiment still applies, but they got the math wrong. Is it possible to answer correctly Correctly? If you choose an answer to this question at random, what is the chance that you'll be correct? 25%, zero, 50%, or 25%? I, it, it would be C, wouldn't it, right? No, it would be B, because none of these make sense. You wouldn't be right at all, because 25 and 25 is 50, but then the 50 over there at C, yeah, this is 0%. No, it's not. We can prove this by contradiction. Oh, wait, and was I right? Hold on. If we suppose B to be the correct answer, we find that we would have a 25% chance. Listen, I'm in the class of Scott Steiner math, all right? Because I'm a genetic freak, like Scott Steiner. All right? <laughs> 
So, so you take your two and a half percent chance of winning. No, oh, whatever. <laughs> if we suppose B to be the correct answer, we find that we would have a 25% chance, which contradicts our assumption that the probability would be 0%. If we suppose C to be correct, we again find a 25% chance, contradicting our assumption of 50% again. If we suppose either A or D is correct, then they both must be correct. So we find the probability to be 50%, which again contradicts our 25%. Since we've proven none of the answers can be true by themselves, we can conclude there is no correct answer to the question. Edit. Well, it might seem that because I end up with zero correct answers, that would make B the correct answer. This is not true because if B was correct, the probability must be at least 25%, which contradicts B being correct. Oh, so I was wrong. Edit two. Okay, some of the replies have me doubting this explanation. They point out that when we eliminate all other possible answers, the probability becomes 0%, making B correct. I win, I was right. I believe what's really happening here is a paradox where B can't be resolved to either true or false. So to say all of the answers are incorrect is wrong. And that was the million dollar question. You just want a million dollars. What would the price difference equate to? How would preparation time and labor influence the cost? 1600 calories, 1600 calories. Oh, great. Yeah, now do a price comparison between the two. Okay. On the right, you have a USD Haas avocado hole, which is $1.19 each, a pack of strawberries, which is $3.49 a pound, a pack of blueberries, which is $3.99 a pint, boneless pink salmon pre-packed at $2.49 cents each, broccoli crowns at 169 a pound, tomatoes at 249 a pound, tzatziki sauce at 499 a pack, raspberries at 399 a pack, cauliflower at 349 a head, spinach at 199 a bunch, tuna at $2.29 a can, wheat bread at a buck 99 per loaf, and plain yogurt at $3.69 per tub, which makes our total $37.77. And that's not including prep time, and is only the stuff I recognize. I assume pre-mixed sauces and didn't include cooking requirements like oils, salts, pepper, that you'd have on hand anyway. Prices are from Hannaford Bros to go shopping from Southern New Hampshire. If we assume generously it only takes an hour to prepare all of this at say $12 an hour, you've got $49.77 for the right hand side. The left side looks like 15 bucks plus minus every job site I've ever been to with zero prep time. Not making judgments, just comparing all the aspects. Edit and addition. At some have pointed out, there are gonna be multiple uses of the items listed. So you're looking at 10 bucks USD less when you account for things having multiple servings. Edit two. So I guess the meal on the left is a three pound meal in the UK plus the pastry and Starbucks. So meal on the left is more like eight to $10 USD. Well, it really matters, I think, what it makes you feel. I feel like you could have both. Both are 1600 calories and both can have their, their place wherever you choose to, you know, these are these fit different situations. If you're on the go, the the Coke, the little pastry, like that's fine. If you're at home and you can, you know, have time to cook, go with the go with the option on the right for sure. All I'm saying is there's a time and a place for all of it. How to prove? Prove that one plus one equals two. One hundred marks. Prove? Oh no! Just say by. Sorry, is his name Pino? Is this this guy's name? He, I'm gonna call him Pino. Just say by Pino's axioms. The latter of which basically states that there is a successor function S n equals n plus one. So if you plug one in S, S1 equals one plus one equals two. It's just that simple. You can alternatively use the different set of axioms in 1910 Whitehead slash Russell Principia Mathematica, rather grandiously named for the book by Newton. That makes the problem harder, but some axioms needed for it can be proved using Pino's axioms. So there really is no point to doing things the hard way. You're welcome for the 100 marks. You can credit me at the bottom of the page. It's 2589 BC. The Egyptian are building the Giza pyramids. You are immortal. You have zero dollars. You decide to save ten thousand dollars every day, never spending a cent. Four thousand six hundred nine years later, it's 2020. You only have one fifth the average fortune of the five richest billionaires. Tax the rich. Yeah, it's a really interesting argument, and I don't know enough about it to really give a full take. Um, the way I understand it is that, you know, obviously, um, you know, super mega successful rich people are using loopholes to avoid paying taxes. 
Wouldn't it be like part of their whole thing is those mega rich companies and, you know, billionaires will offshore part of their operations for how they make their money to low cost countries. I don't know how you get around that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think if we raise taxes that all the billionaires would leave. I don't think that's realistic. Um, but I do think if we raise them here, we would see more like companies building assets in other countries to like avoid being taxed as heavily because their market doesn't have to change. They could still market to people in, you know, in the U S while having their companies operate offshore. I don't know. It's really complicated and someone smarter than me can probably have a really good conversation about it. I'm not smart enough to have this conversation, but hey, according to this post, I saw the pyramids get built. That's pretty cool. Math break, one, three, five, seven. What number will be next? 217,341. Because if F times X equals 18,111, divided by two times X by the power of four, minus 90,555 times X to the power of three plus six, Thirty-three thousand eight hundred and five eighty-five divided by two times x to the power of two minus forty-five thousand four hundred fifty-two thousand seven hundred seventy-three. God, too many numbers. Then f times one is one. F times two is three. F times three is five. F times four is seven, and f times five is two hundred seventeen thousand three hundred forty-one. Just so you know. Discussing Bright with a friend. Yeah, it needs a prequel and a sequel. Yeah, it would be nice to have even like two ounces of context. How much is two ounces in a movie? <laughs> I don't know. It's a standard unit of measurement. That's true. It's a good point. I, I like to assume this is hours later. Just like 5.5 rolls of 35 millimeter film at 25 FPS for a two hour movie averaging 1000 feet per roll and five pounds each. Since you're averaging 200 feet of film per pound and 12.5 feet per ounce, we're going to need 25 feet of additional film at roughly 50 feet of film per minute, two ounces of film context time will equate to 30 seconds of screen time. So Bright needs an additional 30 seconds to explain the context. <laughs> the f Why are you the way you are? That's ADHD going crazy. That that would that, be hyper focused on that for sure. I mean, it could use 128 gigabyte micro SD cards instead. Micro SD cards weighing at 0.5 grams and 28.35 grams per ounce gives us 113 cards in our two ounce limit. Works out to 14,446 gigs of storage using an estimated three gigs per hour of video. We could add 4,821 hours. Wow. <laughs> Edit. Lots of comments about the three gigs per hour. Feel free to use whatever estimate you want. I personally use that rate because it's close to what Netflix streaming will land. I don't see any point to compare it to raw video. Not like anyone ever sees raw video playback. Okay. These math, these math magicians are going crazy. How fast could the London Eye spin like a fan before it breaks? Britain battles heat wave by turning up London Eye to highest setting. Oh no, and now we're gonna talk about it. Oh, that's fun. Okay, here we go. Each pod is capable of holding 25 people at maximum safe capacity. Assuming each person can reasonably be 100 kilograms, that means the safe load placed on any one pod is 2,500 kilograms. The pods themselves weigh 10,000 kilograms. The radius of the London Eye is 67.5 meters. Since at the bottom apex of the rotation, the total force from centrifugal slash centripetal force is equivalent to weight. A centrifugal force equal to 2,500 times 9.81 equals 24,525 newtons is the maximum safe level. We got some equations down here. I believe that's force equals mass velocity and then uh, two divided by the radius. I think I think that's the equation. Velocity is the uh, square root of force radius divided by the mass. So that velocity equals the square root of 24,525 times 67.5 divided by 10,000. Sorry if I'm getting any of these math terms wrong, by the way, it was never my strong suit. I'm just doing my best. But that makes the velocity 12.9 meters a second. The pods could travel at approximately 28 miles per hour or complete one rotation every 33 seconds before the forces on the pods exceed safe levels. Theoretical maximum levels would be higher, but without stress testing, the material cannot be precisely calculated. Dude, letting is, is this what being an engineer is? is it, I don't know. Do we have an engineer on our hands? Get this guy in front of a chalkboard. How many fights did he roughly take to cost the company 21 million? 
In 1987, Steve Rothstein bought a lifetime American Airlines ticket for $250,000. He was flying to other countries just to eat lunch. It ended up costing the company $21 million. Oh, flights, not fights. Okay. A few sources online says he flew over 10,000 flights in that time. I'm not sure if there would honestly be any accurate way to calculate that information considering inflation and unknown variables such as how long each flight was. Many were international. Not to mention he had a passenger pass. He'd often book two seats so he'd have more room in first class and offered flights to randos he met at the airport lounge. He'd also book tons of flights and never showed. He lost his pass due to all those issues. Aw, why? He earned it. See if you were to actually find the surface area, how would one find it? A new shape called the scutoid has been discovered in our cells. Damn, new shape dropped. Bro, I'm so happy I'm out of high school. Imagine having to find the area of a damn scutoid. Well, I mean, assuming you're given all the side lengths and angles you need, split them each face into a bunch of triangles slash trapeziums and find the area of all of them and add them all up. Well, that's how you'd do it. A whale died with 64 pounds of plastic in its stomach. I did the math to put it in perspective. Google says an average whale weight is 100,000 pounds. This whale ate 64 pounds of plastic. That's like having a 200 pound person eat 58 grams of plastic. A plastic shopping bag from Target weighs 9.3 grams. I highly doubt any person would be feeling okay after eating 6.23 plastic shopping bags. Yeah, five is the limit. How much money would this give the government? Legalize weed and tax it. Cut the military budget by 25%. Implement a 1% wealth tax. Put a 10% VAT on corporations like Amazon, Walmart, and Facebook that are profiting from the pandemic. Quick acting like there isn't enough money to help people and start f***ing helping people. I see a lot of incorrect posts here. The national debt is currently about $27 trillion. That's the balance. Before COVID, the annual deficit was about $1 trillion. This is the amount we're adding to it each year. This year, we've added about $4 trillion so far because of COVID and stimulus, but this could go higher. As to the post above, 10% VAT applied broadly would produce about $800 billion to $1 trillion annually. 1% wealth tax applied broadly would bring in roughly $1 trillion annually. However, if it only applies to wealth above $50 million, it would only bring in about $150 billion annually. Cutting the military budget by 25% would be about $150 billion annually. Most of the weed tax benefits would be from local sales taxes. But in combination with the 10% VAT mentioned above, it could be as much as $5 billion annually. So the answer is about $1.1 trillion to $2.15 trillion, depending on how broadly the taxes are applied. I don't know. I don't know what any of that means, but okay, thanks. How much would this cost? Screw a wall. Let's build a dome over Texas and get some AC in this bitch. Didn't they do that in The Simpsons? Smartest thing I've ever heard you say. I'll give this a shot. It's hard to estimate exact costs, but I'll give a rough estimate. Texas is about seven trillion seven hundred thirty-seven billion nine hundred sixty-six million nine hundred fifty-one thousand six hundred square feet. On average, it costs about $2,500 to install an air conditioner for a 2,000 square foot space. So just for the air conditioning portion of this, we take the size of Texas in square feet and divide that by the 2,000 square foot space, then multiply that number by by $2,500, and we get $9,672,458,689,500. That would just be the cost to install the AC. Now about this dome. The total cost will depend on the material of the dome. If you want a sturdy material, iron reinforced concrete material, it'll cost about $130 per square foot. If you just want a plastic tart material, it'll cost about $15 per square foot. So more math now. For the concrete material, you multiply the cost per square foot by the size of Texas, and you get, sorry, is that one, qu one quadrillion, five trillion, nine hundred thirty-five billion, seven hundred three million, seven hundred eight thousand dollars Now for a plastic material, you get $116 trillion, $69 billion, $504 million, $274,000. Now, for the cost, total cost of production, not including labor and electricity, just add the cost of the AC to the materials cost. So for air conditioning Texas in a concrete dome, it is 
one quadrillion, fifteen trillion, six hundred eight billion, one hundred and sixty two million, three hundred ninety seven thousand five hundred dollars over one quadrillion. Air conditioning Texas in a plastic dome, one hundred twenty five trillion, seven hundred forty one billion, nine hundred sixty two million, nine hundred sixty three thousand five hundred dollars or over one hundred twenty five trillion. The TLDR, it would cost a literal absurd amount of money. Thanks. There are about 15.7 million people subscribed to this subreddit. Divided by 365 is 43,013 to about 43,000 people. Happy birthday. Hey, look, and all those people upvoted it too. Uh, birthdays aren't evenly distributed though. Very good point. Way more people are born in autumn and early winter than the rest of the year. It's cause you know, we're keeping warm during those times. How much would this cool the tea? When your tea is hot, but you understand thermodynamics. Oh, come on. This is doable from an engineering point of view. One sip per second of 10 milliliters or a shot glass is equivalent in a few seconds. 90 degrees Celsius tea, zero degrees Celsius water. Do I see ice? I don't know what that little triangle means, but it's 90. Conduction in a thin straw is negligible. Basically water to water heat transfer at a slow rate. The convection coefficient for that is about 1000 watts over that equation, sorry. Forced convection water to unforced water essentially. Straw is a five millimeter diameter, 150 millimeter length is submerged. Total area is five pi times 150, equals 2350 millimeter squared heat exchange area. As such, the heat power transferred per second is, uh, that's a number. What is that, 90 times 1000? I, I can't tell. I can't tell what that is supposed to be, sorry. But it's 211 watts. 211 watts for 0 0.01 ke kilograms of water T per second is a five degrees Celsius difference. This matches my experience. The straw is simply not big enough to offer proper area for heat exchange. Source, 10 years of steam boiler engineering. Hope you enjoyed. I mean, hey, the equation stumped me, but that was cool. Thanks, man. Is this claim actually accurate? Teach me something interesting using one comment. If the world competed one-on-one -on -one with each other, the winner would only have to win 33 times. Yeah, 33 round single elimination bracket would have two to the 33 power participants, which is about 8.5 billion. So it is actually possible, since the world pop is probably just under 8 billion, that the winner would be someone who had the first round buy and only had to win 32 times. Hey, that's not bad. Who's our world's champion? And do I have to acknowledge him? Like my tribal chief. How many nuggets would this be in total? I worked at McDonald's for two and a half years and I put 11 nuggets in almost every 10 piece I made. Hmm. 2.3 billion nuggets sold per year in America by 375,000 workers. Hence, each worker makes 613 nugget portions per year. This would mean he served an extra 613 nuggets over the course of one year, hence 1,533 extra nuggets in total. What a legend. And to put it into perspective, that would be 1,533, but rounded down to 153 10-piece chicken nugget boxes. Each box is worth $4 49 cents according to Google, which means he gave away $687 worth of chicken nuggets. I'm not sure, but I think you'd have to divide that by 11, not 10, but that's a good point. However, I'd argue the revenue generated out of people being happy and hence coming back would outweigh that, not that you were arguing otherwise. It's a business expense. Jeff Bezos could give each of his employees $105,000 and he would have exactly as much money as he did pre-pandemic. But instead he'll donate 200 laptops to middle schoolers and be considered a philanthropist. Why be Jeff Bezos and give 105K to, you know, laptop donations? But you are you, and you could be using code Damien at mkshop.com to buy a shirt or hoodie. And that costs way less than 105 grand. Just something to, you know, think about. Use code Damien, 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 use code Damien. Okay, thank you.